the internet is full of bro science, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, it's time to know the truth about spirulina today. Uh, you must have heard a lot of advertisements and a lot of promises about this so-called superfood spirulina and it is a very rich source of protein iron and many other vital amines but you need to know the truth about the propagandas and what what exactly is the role of this spirulina in food supplements nutritions and medical treatments so here it is research analysis and the recommendation of National Medical Library of the US. So spirulina is a type of cyanobacteria which is also uh, comes in the class of blue green algae and these are actually a group of species of bacteria which can actually produce blue green colored pigment and they can actually grow in salt water and some large fresh water lakes also this blue green algae uh, can actually uh, they have been used for food as food supplements for several centuries in various countries and in US or in India uh, they have been accepted as food supplements since 1970s blue green algae products are also used for many other conditions and there there is many scientific researches which are going on on these things but till now there is not enough evidence to actually determine whether or not they are in they are effective for any of them although blue green algae are taken by mouth for a uh, high source of proteins b vitamins irons they can also be taken uh, by mouth for anemia and to stop unintentional weight loss and many diseases like adhds hay fever allergies diabetes uh, fatigue stress anxiety depression weight loss premenstrual syndrome and other women related health disorders they are also given uh, pre this spirulina and even for menopausal disorders right then some people use these for treating uh, other precancerous growths inside the mouth and improving memory the twitching of the eyelids blue then boosting the immune system and increasing energies and metabolism improving exercise performance lowering cholesterol preventing heart disease and healing wounds improving digestion and even bowel health and actually these are also used for high blood pressure hiv or aids related condition and even fatty liver cancer hepatitis c and poisoning like arsenic poisoning and they are even applied inside the mouth to treat gum diseases right and they can also be used as a food coloring agent right they are very very commonly found in tropical and subtropical waters that have a high salt content but some types actually grow in fresh large water lakes only the natural color of these algae can actually give these bodies of water a dark green appearance right some blue green algae can actually uh, these are produced grown under control environments and other are actually can be grown in natural settings and in natural settings they are more likely to get contaminated by other bacteria and other uh, chemicals like a liver toxin called microcystine microcystine is produced by certain bacteria and they can even get contaminated by heavy metals right so you need to choose your products if you are considering to take spirulina only if they are tested and free 
of these contaminants because it has been found in various in China and other countries that contaminated form of spirulina is being uh, circulated now because it comes in food supplements it is not actually regulated so there is no regulation to check the quality contamination and other things so there are chances of uh, side effects right heavy side effect because of contamination not because of spirulina spirulina by itself can also have some side effects we are going to talk about that in a while but there is actually these uh, you may have heard that and you may have seen so many videos on this topic and many of people have might have told you that blue green algae are an excellent source of protein and, and plus and so a high very high superfood a very good source of various nutrients and the food of the future but the reality is that blue green algae or spirulina is no better than uh, meat milk as a protein source and for that matter the cost of this product is 30 times as much as these products so uh, that is one thing to consider see there is obviously uh, more research needed and more evidence is needed to actually rate the effectiveness of this blue green algae for these uses but you need to understand that it how it works it works because of the content because of the content like these uh, this uh, high protein content iron mineral content which are absorbed when when you take uh, spirulina orally and uh, the effect of these uh, is also being studied on your immune system on your uh, on inflammation on infections right it is obviously a very nutrient rich dietary supplement and it is um, used for uh, malnutrition it is it is being investigated for its safety and dietary support for long term uh, cases long term uh, consumption it came into light after being uh, you know uh, propagated uh, by after being into news for because it was being used by uh, astronauts because it does not need a lot of water right it, it is very uh, it, it just dried spilunina contains 5% water 20 it has 24% carbohydrates 8% fats and around 51 to 70 percent right on an average 60 percent of proteins right we will give a table to actually give you the exact nutritional uh, content right some of the videos i saw were actually uh, exaggerating the protein content that it is 100 times 1000 times 10 times so many times better than this and that and this and that it's actually so much uh, wrong uh, and actually it, it is you know, it is unbelievable how people can you know exacerbate a simple a good ingredient and make it you know a source of income just to boost this into the supplement industry right so you know what happens uh, if you actually take good amount of uh, uh, spirulina the maybe 100 grams of spirulina it can give you a good source of various nutrients which you actually require right 20 percent of your daily calories 90 percent of your daily uh, other uh, you know uh, mina vitamins uh, makes like magnesium right 219 percent of iron so it's very high in iron so you might go into iron overload if you overeat it so that's why you need to be cautious right it has a lot of protein right? it has b vitamins b but it is deficient in b12 you're going to come in that also because b12 uh, is naturally in spirulina it is in a in a form which is not used it's in the pseudo vitamin b12 which is not biologically active in humans so that's why b12 is not there and uh, rest of the things it also has omega 3s dhas epas 2 to 3 uh, percent of total fats 8 percent is the total fat so 2 to 3 percent is this so it's a good uh, source of uh, these these micronutrients then is there any safety concern yes safety of spirulina see blue green algae on a whole are usually that which are free of contaminants are safe right but if they are contaminated with 
microcystines or heavy metals or harmful bacteria they are harmful and in uh, this consideration if you take up to 19 grams per day that can be taken for up to two months and 10 grams per day can be taken up to six months and usually just by spirulina you might have nausea vomiting diarrhea dominant discomfort fatigue headache dizziness these kind of simple side effects but a serious side effects can happen because of contamination but you need to understand that if if they are contaminated they are specially harmful for children children are more sensitive for contaminated uh, side effects then uh, contamination can cause liver damage, stomach pain, and exaggerated weakness, thirst, rapid heartbeat, shock, and even death in certain cases. That's why you need to understand the intensity and uh, make sure that if you are trying this, then you need to consider talking to your doctor. Sp and also if you are pregnant, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, there is no enough uh, evidence whether it is safe or not. So uh, be on the safe side, avoid it. If you have autoimmune diseases like uh, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, then taking spirulina or blue-green algae can actually cause your immune system to become more active and this could actually increase your symptoms because of autoimmune disease. So you can avoid, you should avoid this. If you have a bleeding disorder, say uh, blue-green algae actually can slow down the blood clotting and increase the risk of bruising bleeding in people which already have taking blood thinners like heart disease patients and other patients who are taking blood thinners then phenylketone urea is a disease where uh, because uh, spirulina contains feline anadine and this patients who have phenylketone urea should not contain feline alanine and they need to avoid this because their condition will become worse if they take it then there are interactions with uh, are there any interaction with medication yes there can be interactions with medication so you have to talk to your doctor and be cautious with this combination medications and spirulina especially the medications which decrease your immune system immunosuppressants because spirulina will increase your immune immune system so if you are taking them stay, stay very cautious uh, like medicines like azathio priu pu preen like uh, cyclosporine uh, right any medications which you might be taking like even steroids corticosteroid asthma medication you have to talk to your doctor before trying these steroids some medications like aspirin diclofenac ovioran painkillers they can also react with spirulina herbs can also react with spirulinas if you are taking certain types of herbs like uh, like ginkgo, garlic, ginger, I mean, even turmeric and other herbs can actually react with uh, spirulina. It's a possibility, right? But there are no other uh, known interactions with food product, vegetables and all. So, what kind of, so what, how much should you use? As we already told you that dosage depends upon several factors your age your health your other conditions your current medications right so this all scientific information must be discussed with your primary doctor and then uh, your physician or healthcare professional will give you the advice whether or not use it and how should you use it remember in according to the uh, u.s national institute of health the the scientific evidence is insufficient to actually recommend spirulina for any human condition treatment right and more research is needed to clarify whether its consumption yields any benefit there was a time where spirulina was was have was been uh, given investigated as a way to control diabetes in glucose right but the european food safety authority rejected those claims in 2013 so there are several such claims which are there and many of them have been rejected but there are some promising studies also spirulina does have antioxidant anti-inflammatory and many immuno you know immune system uh, modulating effects so which can be used in certain diseases in the future but you should not experiment with yourself taking them for within the recommended dose limit is okay that is 10 milligrams per day or maximum of 19 milligram per day for an adult is fine but not more than that so don't don't just believe on the advertisement and do your own research 
you don't have to you can go on pubmed or medline plus and read about uh, blue green algae or spirulina and uh, confirm this information thank you so much for watching i'm dr paranjit stay connected stay healthy